Hey everyone, it's Duncan Epping, Yellow Bricks, and today I want to show you something which we haven't actually shown in public just yet on YouTube or anywhere else. We've actually discussed this functionality at VMware Explore in Barcelona, but these sessions were recorded. So what I wanted to do briefly is actually go over some of the announcements that we've did at Explore specifically, so everyone is aware of what may potentially come in the future. Now, I said May for a very good reason. Although this is being planned for VCF9, there is no date committed to this, and there is no actually release committed for this functionality either at this point in time. So I just want to make that clear. So please don't make any purchasing decisions based on what you're about to see. Now, for stretch clustering specifically, we are planning for two new features to be released in the future at some point in time, hopefully. Now, these two features all revolve around consistency and the availability of your virtual machines. Now, the first feature I want to discuss is the site takeover functionality. We've all seen these scenarios where two out of the three data senders unfortunately go down in a stress cluster configuration. At this point in time, if you end up in that scenario, there's only one way to get yourself out of that scenario, unfortunately, and that is phoning up global support, so VMS support or Broadcom support, and then actually have them manually start making changes to the environment for every single uh, virtual machine individually so you can recover those virtual machines. So what we are actually planning for is a new function that if you end up in the situation where two out of the three sites go down at the exact same time that you can still recover from that functionality. The plan for now is to provide you a script, which will be available, of course, through the ESXi host itself. But on top of that, in the future, also have the ability to specify that you want to do a site takeover for a particular site through the UI. So what that actually looks like, because I've got a demo, is the following. As you can see, this, this is the ESX uh, UI itself. And on an ESXi level, you will be able to specify that you want to do a site takeover. Before the site takeover happens, of course, we need to do a pre-check to figure out if the environment is actually healthy. And if you then go on and actually select that you want to do the takeover, it's going to tell you which virtual machines can and which virtual machines cannot be recovered. You can imagine that there, of course, are virtual machines which may uh, be in some kind of weird state so that they cannot be recovered, or for instance, they weren't replicated between the two locations. So that could be a reason for them not being to be able to be recovered. Now, that is the first feature that will provide you, hopefully, in the future. And I think this is going to make the life of customers doing a stretch cluster configuration much easier when they end up in the unfortunate situation where two out of the three sites have disappeared. The other function that we are planning for, and I think this is something that is extremely useful, but from a demoing perspective, and maybe even from a slide perspective, is fairly straightforward, because it is the ability to specify on a per site level that you want to place that site into maintenance mode. So why would you want to do this? Well, you can imagine that if you have a stretch cluster configuration, and of course you're stressed across two sites from a data perspective, and then that's that third site from a witness point of view, that if you need to do any type of maintenance on either site A or site B in this particular example, then it could be advantageous to actually place that whole site into maintenance mode at once. If you look at the way you need to go about doing that today is that if you have this example with three or four hosts within each of the sites, you actually need to go to every single individual host and place that host into maintenance mode. Now, of course, the downside of that is that in the meanwhile, it could still be that data is being replicated between site A and site B. That could also result in, for instance, having data stored on the first host in the cluster, which is different than the data that's being stored in the second host of the cluster as a result. So this is, of course, something that you would like to prevent because that leads to inconsistency. Now, for that particular reason, we're planning on introducing site level maintenance. So an automated, automated way of actually placing the whole site into maintenance mode at once. Now, of course, the added benefit on top of that is that if you end up in a situation where you've placed a full site into maintenance and something actually happens to site B, 
that you can still recover from the data that is available inside A because as they all go into maintenance mode at the exact same time, that data, data will be consistent. So that is the added benefit of this particular feature. Now, and if you look at the UI itself, of course, it's going to be extremely straightforward. Within the UI, we've already present the two different fault domains. And of course, on a per fault domain level, you could specify that you want to go into maintenance mode. If you do that, of course, you need to do a pre-check first and the pre-check will actually tell you what the state of the environment is so if virtual machines are or are not replicated if virtual machines are for instance pinned to a particular location and if they are pinned to a location what is going to be the impact of placing that site into maintenance mode it could be that those virtual machines need to be powered off if you agree with uh, the situation that's there at that point in time and you place the host into maintenance mode all three of the hosts that we see here will enter maintenance mode at the exact same time to ensure that we have consistency from a data perspective in that location of course that doesn't only apply to entering maintenance mode that also applies to exiting maintenance mode so that exact same functionality that we just used to enter maintenance mode we can now use to exit maintenance mode to make all of the data available again so there you have it two brand new features available hopefully in the near future for vcf 9 thanks for watching i hope to see you next time